I try to be a bit different on my channel Feud Nation. Sometimes I score a touchdown, sometimes I strike out at the plate, but I try, push the boundaries, take chances. It unfortunately didn't pay off in a recent video I did exposing YouTube drama, poking fun of people that upload videos, crying essentially about being called names on the internet by seven-year-old kids. I find it funny. I thought it would be kind of cool to do a video where I Photoshop movie critics in the industry, have them call me names, and then I do a 10-minute cry fest. And I, I start out subtle so people think it's real, and by the end of it, it's just so overblown, you have to know it's, it's pretend. The whole thing was made up. Uh, I think a lot of people got it, but some didn't. And I'm nothing if I'm not truthful and honest on my channel. I, I pride myself on that above any, everything else I hold near and dear to my heart. So I want to apologize to those of you that were misled, to those people that thought Chris Stuckman, uh, Flickinger, Jeremy Johns, and others told me to do things like eat a bag of dicks and... Um, Philip DeFranco showing a video of me eating said dicks. That didn't happen. It was for fun. Once more, deeply sorry. That being said, it did fuel some real drama. Um, once Flickinger and the like caught wind of what I had said because I shared the video with them, they weren't thrilled. In fact, they were the opposite. I got a lot of hate way more than my pretend hate. It escalated very quickly in the comments. I think John started things out, and from there it just snowballed. He said something to the effect of, got dicks? Creative, I know, but that's where things are at on the internet. What really pissed me off was when Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis from Schmoes No came in. Harloff says, I picture Adam like Pac-Man racing around the stage, gobbling up dicks like marshmallows. Mark replies, Mum, 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 mum. This time I chose to take the high road and not respond at all, instead of reaching back out to my best friend John Paula and see what he had to say. When Alec called me and said he was being bullied again, I had no idea why his pathetic problems required my attention. I had enough going on. I was completely checked out. John, you seem checked out. Are you even listening to me? Honestly, Asher, I'm knee deep in my own drama right now. But I thought we settled this already. I'm really in a pickle here, J-Town. The comments are vicious. One person told me that my face looks like a carpet in a room full of lesbians. I don't even know what that means. Okay, first off, don't call me J-Town. Secondly, I believe that's a reference to carpet munching. You see, when a woman falls in love with another woman, they like to perform downstairs favors for each other. And if you had a whole room full of lesbians, well, they'd chew all the carpet they could get their lips on. So in other words, they're saying your face looks like the gobbled up remains of deep pile fabric. I think it's kind of funny. I'm not fucking laughing, John! I have to go. The black nerd is calling. I guess I offended him by hating on some dumb movie he likes. With John being tangled up in his own affairs, it was clear I was going to have to reach out to others for help. I would have loved to reach out for a woman for some answers because they're used to being victimized on the internet. But three hours listening to them droll on about their own personal life just sound like something I didn't want to deal with. So instead, I reached to the bottom of the barrel. I consulted my one black friend, Chris Sanders, via text. Yeah, so I was on Adam's show, uh, Movie Feuds, about maybe a year ago, and we were discussing Pokemon movies, which of course is up my alley. Without any further ado, you know, we started working together and it was going really well, and then all of a sudden, he just starts saying things like, hey man, let's get some more color up in here. That guy's a complete idiot. I was unfortunately not able to get a hold of Chris. He's a busy guy these days, I get it. But it dawned on me later that he had been talking shit behind my back on YouTube in another video. He called me sexist. What a shock, that's the popular thing to do. I mean, I should have saw it coming. It's pretty typical for a black man to stab someone else in the back, but usually it's not with harmful words. It's with a shiv. He said what? And I know I'm not the first person to get bullied online. I don't think I'm special or something, but to have it happen at such a magnitude is beyond words. Boogie put out a vlog with a picture of me riding around on some sort of a giant snake cock in a field full of dicks. And that really pissed me off. That really burned me up because I don't even like snakes. Angry Joe tweeted at me yesterday at the time of recording, you done fucked up. So I hit rock bottom, but thankfully I had some friends there to pick me back up. 
Yeah, Alex called me up late one night. He sounded like he had spent the better half of the week sobbing. He was just... The guy was just a pathetic mess. Mark. Marcus, it's Adam Olinger. <laughs> From Feud Nation. That doesn't help me at all. Is that like a place somewhere? Quit dogging, Mark. A lot of people are hating on me right now, and I don't know how to fix this. I figured since we're tight, you could smooth things over. I honestly have no idea who you are. Can't you call your mom or something? No. She won't return my calls. I'm hanging up. You hang up now, and you hang up on our friendship! Mark? Marcus? Mar Marky Mark? I still have no idea who he is. I even tried Googling Adam Olinger and all I got was a bunch of images of some loser eating a bag of dicks. I guess he reviews movies on YouTube, I think. I don't know, the dude's completely forgettable. I recall reading about this whole fiasco a few days ago on Reddit, and then I vaguely remembered that we actually collabed, but you wouldn't have known because we got almost no exposure. I mean seriously, Alex has been doing this for five years, and he has just over 30,000 subscribers. And he is the most clickbait channel that you could probably have, from his thumbnails to his titles, the whole concept. And I'm here on a niche channel, Bloodbath and Beyond, with 22,000 subscribers, and I'm going to surpass him within the year. I mean, it's pathetic. Because of my celebrity status on YouTube, I'm unable to go outside most days. This is a rarity for me. Um, no one actually recognizes me. I don't think anybody ever has, but I feel like everybody's watching me at all times. There's ducks all around me. It's actually quite disturbing. It's a train. What started out as a simple joke has turned into an avalanche of drama that I was not prepared for. But I, there was some good out of this. On that last fake video I did, I had a lot of great supporters. People saying that we believe in you, Adam. Don't listen to the haters. I mean, even though I, I made the haters up. But don't listen to them. Um, stay strong. Keep putting out your great content. You're a hero. Wow. Am I a hero? Certainly not. In most instances. I think in this particular one, though, yes, I absolutely am. I want to be real for a second and bring up a name I haven't uttered in years, may be familiar to you, Corey Williamson. This is a guy who used to host movie feuds with me a couple years back. I've had a hard time talking about this. I kind of get choked up just thinking about it. I never have shared what happened to Corey. He never said goodbye. We did a Goonies versus Sandlot video and that was that. If you were to have told me a couple years back that you could die from masturbating, I would have laughed in your face. But that's exactly what happened to him. He, uh, he was in a dark place. A lot of mean comments, a lot of negativity on the internet, and when you are at a status like him and I, you are expected to be a certain type of individual at all times. You're expected to be on top, you know? Always delivering grade A material, never missing a beat, and it got to Corey. He just, he needed to latch on to something and not let go for multiple hours in a day. He just needed a release in multiple ways and that was something that he got from chronic masturbation and it eventually would lead to his death. I've been out to see him a few times at the grave. It's tough, you know, we, we were friends, we were close. We did 54, 57 episodes together. Um, do you know he had shit taste in movies? Yeah. He barely saw new movies, which made it hard to do any sort of a debate structure. Some people would say that he never died and that he just left the show because there's no revenue on YouTube. There's very little notoriety unless you put out a new video every day and it's a flavor of the week sort of event. But no, he died of masturbating and I want to make that clear. It's been a long day without you, my friend. You may remember me, I'm Corey Williamson, uh, former Movie Feuds. I, I used to be on the show, but you know, after all the comments and you know, the death threats and everything to my family, I had to go into hiding and I, I had to fake my own death. I don't know how Adam puts up with it. I uh, hate oh. Gotta keep it on the down low. Don't many knows I'm still alive. 
Anyway, I don't know. I might make an appearance. I'm not sure. This whole thing's got to settle out, though. I gotta go. I gotta go. This whole thing, I'm just kind of over it now. I'm, you know, I have a thick skin. I have a hard shell. Much like Destiny's Child, I'm a survivor. Even though that band basically, I mean, they split up and Beyonce went on to much better things. If I was a betting man, I would wager all the money I had that this whole fiasco is just a sham again and he's just lying to try and get attention. Nobody cares about Abe and his problems. I mean, we can't even remember the guy's name. I think it's Adam. Who? Some people just don't know how to take a hint, you know, like, when's he gonna wake up and realize that people don't want to hear a grown-ass man talk about movies unless he's in front of collectible toys or his DVD shelf or he's representing using merchandise or something. Something like that, you know? It's it's relatable. It's real. Alright, look, I'll have to get back to you. Uh, I got a lot on my plate at the moment, as you can see, so I'm gonna have... Oh! Is this the dirt on YMS? Excellent. Alright, got it. Perfect. Sheila, uh, you can take the rest of the afternoon off. You're fired. Adam Olinger is a racist and sexist. The guy was a pathetic mess. It was really pathetic. More pathetic than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Just brutal. Okay.